I had a friend who asked me if I was going to switch from the generator and alternator, and the answer is no. I'm going to keep the generator on the car. The generator uses an external regulator, which is right there. That's the horn relay, generator regulator. I did paint the power steering pump up, by the way. But I am keeping the generator. The difference between the alternator and the generator was the generator load was carried through the brushes, which are back here in the housing. I don't know if that shows up in there or not. Alternators brushes just carried the field current, so the the armature on a generator was the field, or on an alternator, sorry, alternator was your field, and the brushes just carried a minimal amount for the field windings to incite the armature windings, which were on the housing of an alternator. On a generator, the field windings are on the housing, armature windings are on here, and they produce the current through the brushes. So the brushes wear out prematurely at generators. Iron, they're rather heavy, and alternator is aluminum. They're much lighter. An alternator will charge at lower RPMs to where a generator will not. Um, so that's a lot of the reasons why people go to alternators. I like keeping the original generator. This has oilers on it for the bearings. So you can oil the bearings. Keep them. They'll last for forever if you keep them oiled. I fill those oilers up about every thousand miles on my old cars or every month or two I'll fill the oilers up with the engine off you never want to fill your oilers with the engine run and always do it with the engine off alternator has diodes in it that converts the alternating current to direct current and a diode is like a one-way check valve it allows current to flow one way and not the other you can blow your diode sometimes by jumping the car putting a booster starter on it and then your battery will discharge when the car is off rapidly, usually overnight. Um, you can replace the diodes in the alternator. They're easy to change if you're good at taking things apart. I like to rebuild my own alternators and generators. Um, you can check your uh, alternator by seeing if you're getting a current drain by taking your battery cable off, a wire between the cable and the post. If the light stays on, you got something draining. Now, on modern cars, it could be the radio, clock, engine control unit, a lot of new cars, a lot of things always drain, but these old cars, generally nothing's draining. If you have a clock, just take the fuse out or for the radio, and you shouldn't have any current draw. Um, so that's just a little bit about, you know, why I I'm going to keep the generator. And another thing too, I have a voltmeter in my 59 Chevy under the dash. And voltmeters aren't really as true as an amp meter. I'm telling you what your charging system is doing. But as amperage decreases, voltage increases. So when you start your car, your, amp, your voltmeter might be, you know, 12, 8, somewhere around in there. And as the amperage decreases as that generator gets the battery back up the voltage will increase and the Chevy will be running close to 14 volts when the batteries charge but when I start the car the the voltmeter might be shown like I say 12 6 12 8 because the amperage coming out lowers the voltage and it, and like I say it's as amperage decreases voltage increases so that's just a little bit about why I am keeping the generator because I want to keep the car original, a little bit of difference between the an alternator and a generator.